Project 140, Floor Mirror Circuit. We'll use the same one as in Project 139, but we will carefully mount it in an inverted position on the floor, as what the diagram shows. And then we will take one of the mirrors and carefully mount it, place it underneath the circuit and align it just right so that the alarm goes off. Please turn down your volume. And now the horn sounds when the mirror reflects light onto the phototransistor. The white LED once again just indicates that the circuit is on and it is used to control the Project 141 box circuit. We will use all four small base grids and attach them to the main base grid by following, following this diagram. Here's what the circuit should look like. We have the color LED on one side and the white LED on the other side. We will turn on the slide switch and both the white and color LEDs light up. So although the circuit looks complicated, its principle is very simple. There are just two LEDs that come on. But you could use this circuit to hold the remaining parts of your Snap Circuits 3D illumination kit if you do not plan on using them for a while. You can store them in a very fancy way. Project 142, Burglar Alarm Box. We will build this circuit using all four base grids and it looks very similar to the previous one but we included more components including the phototransistor and horn. Once the slide switch is on the white LED will light and we also need to use the attachment on the phototransistor. Now if I was to put my hand right between the white LED and phototransistor, an alarm will sound because the light will be blocked and this will lower electrical resistance and sound the alarm. I am going to demonstrate now. Volume warning. If I remove my hand, the alarm stops because light can reach the phototransistor again. Now you could pretend that you can actually place something in this box. I'm going to use these 3D glasses from this, this Snap Circuits kit. And then if someone was to try to take them, the alarm would sound. Chances are they will reach right between the white LED and phototransistor. And hopefully it would alert me if someone was trying to steal them. Oh, this is a, you know, this could be a very useful circuit to have in your bedroom if you want to guard certain possessions from, let's say, siblings. Project 143, Outer Lights House. Using this circuit, which includes three of the four smaller base grids, we will turn on the slide switch. Lights on the outside of the circuit come on and flash. We have the light tunnel which performs a show. We have the color LED which also blinks. And we have the white LED which is on steadily. So you can pretend that this is a house that has spectacular outdoor lights. And note that when building this circuit, that the pegs of the base grids face outward. Here's the diagram right here. And here's some 3D pictures to show you, to give you an idea of how the circuit should look when you complete it.
You could put this circuit in a dark room and use it as a light show. Project 144, Light Tunnel Tower. We are going to use this circuit, which is unique because one of the base grids is mounted at a very high level. And we will turn on the slide switch and the light tunnel comes on. And now this is like a tower in which the light tunnel is mounted at the top and you can use this circuit to signal someone in the distance. Like if you want to call them over to you, although you would have to make sure they understand in advance that that is your signal for them. You get a nice light show in the process. Project 145, Morse code. Using the circuit from the previous project, we will make some modifications. For instance, we will replace the slide switch with the press switch and modify the connections to the light tunnel. When we hold down the press switch, the light tunnel will be on. When we release the press switch, the light tunnel will go off. And the purpose of this circuit is to learn how Morse code is used. Morse code was one of the earliest forms of communication, and it was the predecessor to the telephone. And it only has two states, on or off. And it uses a series of dots and dashes that represent letters, numbers, and punctuation marks. And you can practice all of the symbols by using, by holding down the press switch for different periods of time. A dot would mean a very short press, while a dash would mean a very long one. For instance, if I want to do the letter A, which is a dot followed by a dash, I would hit the press switch once quickly and then followed by a longer press, which would represent a dash. Now for B, it would be one dash and three dots. And then for C, it will be a dash, a dot, followed by another dash and dot. I'm not going to do all of the symbols, but I might do the number one. And then do a question mark. And now it must have taken a very long time just to write a sentence using Morse code, but it was probably a lot better than sending letters or walking long distances to get to send messages to someone else. Oftentimes, very short phrases were sent using Morse code. Project 146, Tower of Lights. Modifying the Project 145 circuit, we will replace the light tunnel with the white and color LEDs and connect them to the circuit as shown in this diagram. We will leave the press switch attached and whenever the press switch is held down, the white and color LEDs will light up. Now you could repeat Morse code using the guide for Project 145. For instance, if I want to do A, I would do a dot followed by a dash and so forth. If you want more information about Morse code, you can refer to the previous project. Project 147, Light Controlled Light Tunnel. Using this circuit, we will place it in a brightly lit area so that there's light on the phototransistor. And the more light there is, the brighter the light tunnel will get.
and then if you were to cover the phototransistor or move the circuit into a darker area, the light tunnel will go off because electrical resistance increases when there's less light on the phototransistor. Project 148, IR controlled light tunnel. We will use the previous circuit, but put the Q4 attachment onto the phototransistor and if necessary, move the circuit into a darker place so that background light does not interfere with the circuit's operation. And then we will also need an infrared remote control and we'll hold it directly over the phototransistor, pointing it down and push any button. The light tunnel will flash as the infrared light from the remote reaches the phototransistor. Like I mentioned in previous projects, using a remote control, the remote does not send out a continuous light signal. The infrared signal comes in a series of dashes, a pulses. So the light tunnel is not going to be on continuously when activated by the remote. Project 149, liquid conductor. We will use this circuit, which has the red and black jumper wires, and you'll notice that they're not attached. With the slide switch on, the light tunnel is off, but we will need a cup of water, and we will place it next to the circuit, and we will put the ends of the jumper wires inside. And watch what happens to the light tunnel as I place them both. It lights up. And it works just as it would if the jumper wires were directly connected, even though they're not. And that's because water conducts electricity. Water is one of the best conductors of current. And now if we removed one or both of the jumper wires from the water, the circuit will turn off because that electrical circuit is now broken. Put it back in and the light tunnel comes back on. Now they say not to drink any water used in this project, which makes sense.